Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. With a tight illustrated paint in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Hello, and once again, this is Clyde J. Gale, and it's Monday, January the 11th, 11th, 2021, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 79, and this week, I am here with Diane Hunt and Thompson Bronson, my two best artist friends, and hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Hello to our listeners. Thank you so much for tuning this in. And if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see our discussion video or recommended discussion videos for our discussion for this week. And the theme is... um, Social media, uh, marketing, and motivation to, to uh, inspire you to uh, continue uh, continue your art career. We'll just, that's kind of a gen- generic. Uh, who knows how we we'll, uh, how the discussion will go? We just I just select these videos just to uh, keep us going, and of course it is. Wisdom, motivation, wisdom from our favorite Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V. We haven't referred to Gary in a long time. He always provides some outstanding uh, motivation and and um, points and strategies and a good kick in the pants and a smack in the face to get up off your butt and pursue that career, regardless of whatever, if it's an art or or whatever the first video i put up there was a video where uh, gary had um, held a uh, i guess it was a zoom meeting with some older business folks which i thought was rather interesting for and and making some marketing uh, giving some marketing suggestions for 2021 and he started off the conversation which really it's all so interesting i just you could just see the reaction of the faces of the members when he says, if you have a business and you want to be successful in 2021, you must be producing at least a minimum of 15 pieces of content and posting per day. And their eyes got real big. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, and he explained. And uh, what I like, Sometimes when he says content, people think, but when Gary refers to content, 
it is it is either written audio or video or a combination of the three and you can get 15 posts a day out of that you know those those three genres in previous talks he's also mentioned well if you say you're not very good at making videos but you're really good at writing okay produce more written content blogging and, and whatnot or you can take your uh, uh written content and then have it have it uh uh transcribed into an audio and produce an audio and then combine that with 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 some uh, videos and he, he these are you know he gives his, that's his stick it's his normal stick that he's been doing talking for for the last you know couple of years and we had previous videos you know with that um what struck me at a question and answer on this and what struck me what i found to be very interesting was there's a gentleman there who he and i don't remember his corporation that he runs but he said he was like 55 and he said he hadn't really heard of gary that much until his 17 year old daughter happened to mention him and then he got thinking now he knew gary was in his 40s how did he appear appeal to this 17 year old daughter but here is this highfalutin business guy what so he investigated gary and about that time his this gentleman's daughter entered the room because gary asked is your daughter there yes and she wanted to say hi so you know they said hi and he told her she said that she followed him on tiktok followed his his videos on on, on tiktok and yeah he said oh that's so sweet thank you you know they exchanged you know pleasant airs. but uh, then afterwards what the what the the uh uh gentleman was saying was asking gary he asked gary he says, how can how how do you appeal to my daughter and also to me what are you doing and so gary went and described you know about making a different kind of content and everything uh constance did you did you catch that in, in that video that that segment yes I, he says that you know there's different platforms that he posts on and i think that's how he gets the different age ranges uh tiktok really is for a younger crowd but if you want to reach a younger crowd you need to be posting on tiktok um and instagram he always has been posting on instagram and facebook you know and he talks about how people complain about how much they had to pay for marketing and when marketing is really can be free if you want it to be you don't have to pay for it you can just you know post enough and then you'll you'll get found you know that, that that's the that's the gist of of, of his talk is that the uh you know corporations are still spending millions and billions of dollars on tv advertising and uh it's not being viewed it's not being you know and well it's being viewed but it's being forced down people's throat and they generally look down at their phone when that's going on and they mute the television which i do i mean anybody that watches television does that or i watch television and play on the phone and if there's a commercial I don't like, I definitely mute it, yep. you know, because it's irritating. <laughs> I mean, they make them irritating on purpose so you'll pay attention to them, but it can backfire if you learn to mute the television and not pay attention to it. And what, uh, uh, Diane, what's one of the things that he always talks about? You've watched LinkedIn, <laughs> being on all the different social media, but um, he's been talking, well, the one one thing you had was about uh, link being on LinkedIn, but I think I think it's mainly just being on the, on the platforms, whatever one you decide to be on, be on it consistently, and um, you know, be there all the time. Yeah, <laughs> talk quite a bit about LinkedIn because it's a it's more of a business. If you have a mm -hmm. if you have a business to business type operation, then you definitely you must be producing content for LinkedIn. You know, and LinkedIn is what he what his emphasis in all these talks. He also addressed the issue of you know the social media, you know the the 
the uh, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Google. They're, they've gotten into the uh, ban operation. They're banning, you know, people with certain political views and they're restricting. They're changing. Their I think it's going to backfire on them. They're going to go because I, I intend to, I was thinking about dropping Twitter. And but the problem is when I advertise for selling jewelry, I need to, to be on these platforms, whether I like them or not. This is what he, he, he addressed, if, if you recall. He addressed that. He says, the whole point is you've got to refocus your mind, your thinking, your perspective. It's not a rate of return issue like normally. Do. So these are attentions. This is where you get attention. Mm -hmm. You create content for the particular audience because with these platforms, you can actually tailor your content for specific, specific. Right. You know, he says, if you want to uh, appeal to uh, conservative groups, there are platforms for conservative, con conservative folks. If you want to appeal to lib um, liberal folks, there are platforms for, you know, there. So, and if, as somebody in business, you do need to not be political online because it can cut your throat. Well, absolutely. And that's so whatever your political views are online. It's not the place to air them. Not unless you don't have nothing to lose and people who are in business <laughs> have a lot to lose. So it's just not a good place to go, absolutely. you know? So, so he, uh, you know, and, and he, you know, he addresses some of that. It, it's a, it's a case of, of, uh, tailoring your, your, your content for that specific audience. And you have to use the emphasis of, branding so yeah. that's what appealed to me and you know and when he's, when he's talking about your strategies you know uh it's more of a, of a way of thinking and that's like his next video uh which uh i i love the title nobody is stopping you you watch that one diane yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before, too, that there's not any gatekeepers anymore like there used uh -uh. to be. And, you know, it's really up to you yourself to put yourself out there and, you know, find wherever your customers are. And um, there's nobody um, dictating to you what you can and cannot do as far as putting your art out there like there used to be, like, you know, the gallery system that's kind of gone away. And so it's really up to, you know, your own, especially yourself. since the pandemic. <clears throat> it's got, yeah. Yeah. It is the old way of doing things I, uh, for artists. The old career paths are completely gone. They are, they are just completely, they have just, I think to me well, that what the yeah. feeling I got was a lot of galleries were all of a sudden scrambling to get online because they couldn't have visitors in the galleries anymore you know i mean yeah i mean there are still galleries open and there are, there were some that were keeping up with the times and having online presence but the majority of them weren't and it's really going to be hard for them now to try to scramble and yeah you know yep. get on there and catch up with every all the technology and stuff it's, it's yeah, not an easy I, thing i mean we've seen that ourselves just trying yeah. to do it and it, we've it been takes on time, for what we've know. been doing this for uh, over a year now and well a couple of years and talking to each other before we even started doing podcasts and about how hard it is to get started in this platform or that platform and get keep things going while you get over to another platform and get it going and you know so it's yeah, a big and keeping up with the changes and stuff yeah, yeah because all the platforms are constantly changing and trying right. to keep up with all that and and also make art too. So yeah, it's on top of it. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, and that's what we've uh, had uh, uh, discussions of uh, you know time management strategies, and uh, there's there's all kinds of strategies out there. But it comes down to what Gary says: you got to do it. You know, you can, you can uh, we can set up, you know, a a, a uh, write a write a perfect strategy down and. Boy, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to send uh, write a blog, and I'm going to post here, and I'm going to post there. But I'm going to do it all after I get done watching this movie. 
<laughs> well, the thing is, it's easy to say that you're going to do these things. It's harder to actually do them. Yeah. And you and it and to do them consistently and you know do part of it every day. Like you know, you can't let up on it because as soon as you do, mm-hmm. you're you've been forgotten. People moved on to the next person or you know the next thing. So you have to constantly be keeping up with it all. And I and and uh, these things work. They work. Uh, I I my art is on uh, several different platforms, and on a regular basis, I'm now making making sales. All of last year, every single month, I had one, two, sometimes up to four sales from uh, one or more of those platforms that I'm on: uh, Fine Art America, Redbubble, Society Six, uh, Art Pal, and Dazzle. And it was my art in some form or either a print or an apparel item. And every single month of last year, I'm starting this year. I've already gotten two sales uh, in January. So I'm starting, you know, and I planned. But this didn't come about. I was on those platforms for, let's see, I started in 2017. So I didn't even get my first sale, and then the percentage now is only ten to twenty percent. So you know, on a fifty dollar item, you know, that's like two bucks. Yeah. So the, the sales is not anything for me to you know, brag about as far as dollar amount. But um, I didn't get my first sale until what was it uh, near the end of two thousand eighteen. Then I was jumping around. Oh wow! Yeah, that's that's another thing that makes it hard to keep up with it because you don't see anything happening. You know, it's not like an immediate return on your on right. your investment of your time. And, just and, because uh, you can't get discouraged because yeah, you just have to keep at at the helm and keep you know banging away at it because then it eventually is going to break through. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it is at sometimes, but and for me, phasing from trying to to get rid of the inventory from all the jewelry that I was making and moving back into the art field is a big step that I took this last year and, and trying to get, you know, another, you know, the art site going and also keep up the jewelry site. So speaking of, uh, before we started, I forgot to mention this. I did see your post, you know, Facebook, you got some kind of a sale going on now and you're mm-hmm. 25% off the, uh, Forty dollars over forty. Well, it's thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah, if you spend thirty nine ninety nine, everything over that is twenty five percent off. And what's the website? Um, Etsy slash Etsy dot com slash shop slash C Brosnans B C B R O S N A N S. Okay, say it one more time for our listeners. Uh, Etsy dot com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Okay. So for our listeners, if you want to get some, uh, some beautiful, uh, personalized handmade jewelry from our artist friend, Constance, visit yep. give them, uh, give them an opportunity. I'm glad you happened to mention jewelry because that ring the bell. I saw the, uh, the Facebook posting. Of course I shared it to, to my, uh, you know, father. I was up at two 30. I had so much stuff going on, going around like this in my brain. I'm going, Oh my gosh, I'm never going back to sleep. So I just got up and made coffee and started working. Cause I had all the, all these things I wanted to accomplish, you know? So and the, that happens. the last video recommendation was from our friends, uh, Rafi and Clee. And we were talking about the uh, Patreon, you know, patreon.com, which is a crowdfunding site. And uh, they were, it was a short video and they were answering questions. Now, uh, uh, I like some of the things they were saying because, uh, you know, Patreon, when you first start up, they've changed it though. Now. Yeah, it's changed a lot. But it, but in the beginning, you had to, uh, for your supporters, what it is is, is folks uh, who want to support your art, they um, sign up, they agree to send a monthly amount of money, a dollar or two dollars, five dollars or whatever. And then you have what's called rewards or perks. And it's usually either a print or, or something for a certain amount of money. Okay. Um, 
I did exactly what Rafi was talking about. Constance doing, yeah, and I've got to now go back and adjust it. And I like his, 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 uh, his, and, and I, I got myself, you know, kind of in a bind because when I started Patreon, uh, I had, had started it, uh, long before I, uh, decided to pursue a professional art career. I had, had started to support my internet radio station mm-hmm. and I've been on it since when they first started, I think it was 2015 or something like that when they first started. And, um, let me tell you, I'm not making a lot of money, but I'm very grateful for what I do receive, but I've had as many as 25, uh, 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 patrons patrons as they call them but and then it's dropped down to 15 i mean six it goes up and down none of them wanted the perks because they have an option where they can you know indicate they want the perk for a certain amount you know most of them are you know one dollar a month or five dollars a month you know and they're they got a few ten dollars but you know they're in that lower range and but uh what I like is what, uh, you know, Rafi suggested, that, uh, instead of getting all wrapped up and nervous about what kind of perks to offer, he says, you just, you know, uh, build a community and, uh, offer, you know, what you think, what people ask you for. He said, most of them, they, you know, they probably don't want anything, but they just want to support you. And that's mm-hmm. why, that was the whole idea of the Patreon was to, uh, have a, a source for artists to, uh, uh, to support artists and, you know, uh, help be funded. Yeah. And whatever you're doing. Well, so conscious you're on Patreon, right? Or- I am. I need to go back and work on it some more because I haven't been there for a while. I don't have any patrons, <laughs> but I think, you know, I need to do some work on it and maybe make it a little more friendly or something. I don't know. <laughs> I just need to go work on it. Yeah. Are, have you heard of Patreon or have, or have you, are, yeah. Are you on Patreon? I don't No, I'm not. I, I heard about it when it first came out. That was probably, like I said, probably five, six years ago, something like that, maybe. Yeah. Um, and I looked at it then, but I wasn't in a position to be able to really offer anything because they, then you had to have, um, something to give at each tier level of what, right. you know, depending on how many, right. how much the people donated or whatever. So it was more than I could do at the time. And I haven't looked back at it since then. So I don't know how they've changed things, but it sounds like they have. So yeah. I guess I need to go check it out again. <laughs> mm-hmm. adjust, adjust my tier levels. And it would be easy because no, none of my current, I got a lot, I think I got 19 patrons now and none of them have uh are donating at, at, at a tier level that i where i have to give them something you know physically they've all because they have the option of they can either um request you know that that level or you know or higher like i've got some stuff on there of course it's basically it started out just for my internet radio station so i would give them um a, a certain level a uh a CD of old time radio shows, you know, the favorites, uh, uh, I, or I would, uh, send them a, uh, and then when I start putting posts in my art, you know, a, a digital, uh, a high resolution digital file at, a, at a, like a higher level and, you know, at a $50 level or whatever. And I've never, ever had a $50 level. <laughs> the ma- no, I was going to offer, well, I, I did offer like for the different tiers was a, a gift of those little artist cards that you can paint yeah you know and uh so mm-hmm. i don't know i need to go look at the structures again and see what you can offer and not offer and maybe work on trying to offer you know do something else figure the it out the highest level the highest contributor is a ten dollar and each and every one has selected uh, uh no perk required because they give you that option you know, oh, do they? Okay. They were the the contributor. I don't think that was a, an option when I looked at it last. <laughs> so. I didn't think it was either. So yeah, that was my hard part trying to figure out what I, forget. I would give somebody if they became a patron. <laughs> I, 
ten dollars. I forget what it's it's not anything real, you know. It, it was a digital item, whatever, you know, that I would send to them. And but uh, so I need to go back and you know double check it. And the thing about it is, uh, running the internet radio station, you know, for my old time radio, it is listener supported. And what I discovered, I would run audio ads, and I mean, I have millions of listeners every day. So that is a very wide audience. And I have a, a separate podcast stream, you know, I create pod, that that's what we put this podcast on. And, you know, uh, millions of, of people. And I've had people who are more willing to send, just send me cash than sign up for Patreon, $5. Ten dollars, twenty dollars. So I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> at different times. That works. There, you know. So I'm not gonna, you know. Hey, I'm not complaining. Not whining. Like Gary, Gary Venture says, don't whine. <laughs> it's better than a sharp stick in your eye. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to say. It, <laughs> it could be nothing. <laughs> so, the sum, sum. We're about ready to wrap up this episode. To sum this episode up. The important thing is you have to find your your own motivation. And like Gary Vanchek says, nobody is stopping you. Uh, using social media is not so much as to uh, give people your opinion because most people don't care about your opinion. But you develop content about your product or your service. In our case, about our art people do care about our art people are interested in how in how uh, we uh you know uh, produce our art like about uh, six months ago i used to never whenever i completed a piece of artwork and when i posted it to across all the other platforms then i would post an image of it on on facebook on my facebook page and yeah, you know, say you know the, the the description, you know, size, and if it's oil or acrylic or drawing or whatever, and the title, and that was it. And ask them and ask for a comment, you know, whatever. Uh, I'd get a few likes, and maybe a comment or two. But then, about six months ago, I started posting what I call work in progress. So I would, at a certain point, I'd take a photo and put that up and ask for input. Every time I post a work in progress, I usually, I get quite a, you know, quite a few comments and also, uh, you know, quite a few likes, you know, and I would say, okay, the next, when this dries, cause I'm using, you know, especially if I'm working oil, I'm used, working on when it's dry, and I'm going to post the second, you know, and it, and then it's interesting because it, uh, people, people, the comments are, well, I'm looking forward to when you get it done, see which direction you take it. Yeah. And that's a way of using social media. I do the same thing. I post the same stuff on the Instagram and I get the same, the same type of reaction. So it just amazed me that people cared about how I created my art. Yeah, Diane, have you have you noticed sex? I saw you doing a few of those sometimes. Yeah, I think I think um, people in general are very curious about how we create something from nothing. You know, and it's, it's kind of a magic trick to, to a lot of people. It's like um, they don't understand how you can do that, like how how you can just make up stuff and and produce something that's you know that they like the end result of <laughs> so it's it's really um especially for the non-artist people you know the kind of yeah answer. i think i think that's we take it for granted because that's kind of how we think but i think you know other people that don't do that don't really understand how we do it and how you know the, the magic of it is. like yeah 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 it's it's really interesting to people and even myself i mean i like to watch um like on instagram or whatever when people are painting, you know, you don't know what it's going to be. And you're like, they do the, um, what do they call that? The quick, um, video. This, and you uh, see it kind of being developed and, you know, 
within a few seconds, the painting's finished. <laughs> it's kind of cool to see how it's how it progresses and what it becomes. So. Yep. So the, these, uh, and when, you know, when Gary Venture talks about, you know, content, that's, that's a form of, you know, a form of content, you know, it is. And, and it's a, it's a, it's a content of building, you know, cause, cause, uh, I have never, ever since I started doing that, I, I have never, ever, ever had a piece of artwork that I posted on my Facebook page that didn't get at least one like at a minimum. Most of them got anywhere between five and 20 and, uh, and comments, uh, as where before, when I was just putting the finished product up, sometimes no comment and I would get, wow, nobody even cares. Well, no, they care. There's just that they want, they want to see how it's done. <laughs> one of these days i i'm going to get brave and probably do a live you know a, a live painting session but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it all, yeah that's kind of tricky it takes quite a bit to set yeah set the lighting the key. you have to start doing some plain air <laughs> you'll be out there painting and people will come up and ask questions and tell you things and it, after you, know, well, you, you have to, to distance right now until we can quit yeah. the distance thing it's kind of like uh, i saw a t-shirt the other day that had i think it was at judson's plane air place and it has questions on the back of the t-shirt that says yes i'm an artist it's great that <laughs> yeah. your aunt knows how to make paintings also <laughs> <laughs> you know things like that written all on the back of the t-shirt it was really kind of funny yeah <laughs> you know when you're sitting there painting people will come up and just start, you know, saying those, those questions, you know, those, those uh, yeah, comments, statements or questions or, yeah, a lot of them are pretty common. The same oh, thing. Oh, my aunt likes yes. to paint like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, you know, everybody has somebody in their family that likes to paint. <laughs> <laughs> Always you get that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and I also, because yeah, I follow quite a few artists too on you know on Facebook and Instagram. Where and there was one some several weeks ago, somebody posted. I've seen it a couple of different times, different variations of it. But it says, uh, uh, "Can yeah, can you can you do this painting at a, at a cheaper cost?" And it shows the picture of a horse, and then it shows the drawing, and it looked like a child's drawing. <laughs> <laughs> right, the front of the horse looks really good, and the back of the horse looks like a child's rump with a tail on it. Yeah, there's also a thing out too, you know, because I used to have sometimes some people come by the table when I was selling jewelry at the sale on Friday, on Saturday every Saturday. They would come by and say, "Well, you know, I could make that," and I, was, and I said, "Yeah, you probably could." I said, "You, you want me to make you a list of all the materials you're going to need?" And they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I start <laughs> making a list of, and it's like, this is $13, but it's going to cost you $94 to buy all the materials you need to make this. Because <laughs> you got about a whole string of beads and the pliers and the whole thing of wire, <laughs> you know. So it's just, it, they don't stop to think about production costs, you know. Yeah, it's $13, but. But, and the time you have to buy all the tools to make it with is in the materials this is going to cost you then what are you going to do with the rest of that string of beads you only need one <laughs> yeah <laughs> our material is expensive too you know so you know that's why those uh those paintings are at a certain price to at least cover the material cost you know and then well labor on top of it i mean how many hours do you, does it take you to make a painting and if you prepare the panels and canvases yourself then that's another cost, you yep. know, in labor and in, you know. Yeah, you people don't paper. think about just your office costs and your space costs. You know, I mean, you have a studio space or even if it's part of your house, you're still paying for electricity in that area. You're still paying for heat or air conditioning. You know, you have, you have expenses that aren't necessarily in the painting or, you know, whatever you're creating. So it's... I'm having to feed a cat part-time and then... <laughs> pull the mice out of the studio and throw them out and say this is your job <laughs> you know, but we have to buy mice traps all the time and peanut butter to catch the mice with 
<laughs> but I mean, you know, and just last year, the air conditioner went out in my studio. So that was like $700 for a new air conditioning, you know, because we got a heater and air conditioner to, mm-hmm. combination to go in there. But you didn't sell uh, any paintings to pay for it, did you? Yeah. No, uh uh-uh. uh. I, I, you know, it just is, goes with the territory. That's hopefully we'll get there one of these days. That's the whole thing. Creative life. That's the that's the life, yeah, the artist life that we've chosen. And I used to we're in Paul Klein's course and and he started out and he says, Being an artist, you really you don't have any choice. Uh you're going to be an artist regardless if you make money or not. Yeah. I mean, you don't choose to be an artist. <laughs> no, it's kind of crazy to choose to be an artist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just something that you have to do. And that's what the conclusion he's come to. He said, you're going, if it's in your bones, it's in your DNA, you're going to be an artist regardless if you make money or not. So why not try to make a living of it? And I always like See, last year for me, the air conditioner wasn't that expensive. You know, I mean, it's expensive, but this year it's the vehicle. <laughs> the vehicle is toast. <laughs> so I've got to get a new vehicle or I can't go to any more art shows. Yeah, when they start back up. <laughs> yep. So I've got to do that. So I mean, it's it does cost to stay in business. Yep. Okay, folks, let's wrap up this episode. You've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode seventy nine, for uh, January the eleventh, twenty twenty one. And my name is Clyde J. Kale. I have been talking with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and I really hope you folks. Uh, our listeners enjoy these podcasts. And I'm going to say good night to Diane and to Constance. Not Con- good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Good night, folks. And thanks so thank you so much for listening. And like I always say, give us a thumbs up or a star rating. Let us know what you enjoy these uh these podcasts and feel free to email cjkale at sign mystery dash otr.com suggestions for future episodes uh, we're always open to suggestions bye-bye folks the artist friends podcast is produced and edited by clyde j kale participating artists Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kim. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Fly J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating, and most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.